In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to warp up our ribbon and tablet loom for tablet weaving. Um, I'm showing you the illustration from the booklet that comes with the loom. Uh, this is a build it yourself loom, so you do have to put it together all by yourself, but all of the pieces are there and full instructions. And basically it's got two roller beams so that can open up a whole load of possibilities for your weaving. You do also get a rigid heddle so that you can do traditional inkle bands as well. So let's get started. So here's the loom. And I know I don't want to be too far away with the camera, so you'll only be able to see piece, parts of the loom as we sort of work, But um, which is why I showed you the front of the cover. I'm going to be using Design T7 in the booklet. So this one um, is not the initial one to start off with in the booklet but hopefully we'll show you a couple of variations because it's showing you tablets that are actually threaded differently. So to read the pattern, all you need to do is you'll see how many ends that you need. So for this one, you need 32 ends, which is lengths of thread. So whatever length you want, about a meter is good for some short lengths if you want to do like journal ties and things like that. Um, and of those, 16 are a light color and 16 are a dark color. The weaving directions for this particular pattern is very simple. You turn all of the tablets together, four forward, four back, and I'll explain all of that as we go through. Your key is how you thread. Now this is really important because different authors, different books, different all sorts will probably give you a slightly different key. And it's really vital that you understand how the author has set up, otherwise your pattern may not turn out properly. It may turn out on the underside of your weaving. Um, <clears throat> so it's always really good to check that. So for my patterns, I am saying that back is the cloth beam and the cloth beam beam on this side as you warp up. It doesn't matter where it is, you know, when you're actually weaving, you'll probably turn it around. And forward is to the warp beam, which is the unwoven length of thread. Okay, so that's on this one to your left. Okay, and that's basically what that key is showing. And then that key is also showing, I'll just get it in focus for you. A, B, C, D. So that's your initial setup of your tablets to face them in that way. Okay. So now to explain all of that. <clears throat> First thing we have to do is we have to thread the tablets. Thread your tablets from the last tablet to the first tablet. So you'll start threading on tablet number eight. The reason that you do this is because then you're stacking them up and bringing them towards you and they will automatically be in order for the key. Okay. So we're going to weave tap, we're going to thread up tablet eight and tablet eight needs to have an S angle. Okay. And that's the angle of the tablet from above. So basically what that means is that we're threading that, um, from the back, to the front. It's not S anyway. Okay. So we'll get our tablet. You see the tablet is got A, B, C, and D. All right. So this will tell us A needs to have a yellow in it. B needs to have a green or a dark. In this case, it's, it's light and dark. So C dark, D dark. Okay. So I'll explain these angles then. So if we start with A, and A being a light length of thread, and we thread through from the back to the front, okay? 
Now I'll show you this when I've got a few done so that you can actually see what, what I mean. So then we need to thread up the others, which are all with a dark thread. They must be threaded in the same direction. So this will come through from the back again to the front. Take that length aside. And then from the back to the front. And then from the back to the front. If you hold those ends in your right hand, and then you hold the other lengths in your left, and then you take the tablet and you look at it from above, you can see that the angle of the tablet matches that on the pattern, okay? And it's as, as simple as that. So when we do the other, ones that face the other way, we thread from the front to the back. So we'll tie those four into a little knot to ensure that they don't come loose, okay? I'm just gonna move the pattern out of the way and I'm gonna bring the loom forward. Because that's tablet number eight, I'm then going to thread one of the sticks that comes with the loom through the center hole. Place that to the back and you'll see I've got the two holes on the two threads on the top at the top and the two threads at the bottom at the bottom. And I'm just resting the threads over the top of the beam on this side. Okay. Now to save a little bit of time, I've already threaded up a few of the other tablets. So then we have tablet number seven. And I'm going to thread that on. And basically that's what you'll do. You will thread each according to the pattern and then six and then five. You'll thread each according to the pattern, pop it onto the stick to help you to keep them in order. I mean, you don't need to. Some people would probably prefer not to have them resting on the stick, but it does help to keep everything in order, particularly if you have never done tablet weaving before. You wanna make sure that you keep them in order. And then we need to go back to the pattern and you'll see that the angle changes. So for the next four tablets, we need to thread them differently. So again, We need to get our tablet, and this time we need to thread from the front. So, bring in our pattern. Number four needs to have A, B, and C as light threads. So, from the front, A, B and C and then D as the dark thread. So again, from the front. So we'll knot those. And I'll just show you again how it looks from the top. So you can see that the slant is now different. And this is called 
a Z or Z slant, and that's because think of the angle of the letter. Okay, so the other one is an S because of the angle of the letter. And so you continue in that way. Again, we'll bring the loom forward again so that you can see what I'm doing. Setting them on the stick, and again, I have already threaded the next three, just to save a little bit of time. So that is our actual tablet threaded. Now here's where there are many different ways to do this, but I want to keep it very simple. And so this is very much a beginner's way of uh, warping up the loom. For uh, intricate weaves, you will do something more complex, but by that point, if you're doing anything intricate or wide or with a, a large number of tablets, you'll already know what it is that you need to do. So I'm really, really putting this for beginners. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to get a waist thread. So a length of thread, and fold it in half. We're gonna lay the fold over the top of the roller and bring the two ends in through the loop and fasten. Okay, that, tighten that up. We're gonna have our roller stop ready. You see that just slots in and that will stop the roller from actually moving. Now what we need to do is we need to very carefully, it's a good idea to hold onto the tablets and it's not a bad idea to keep the um, stick in place. We're going to take each of these threads that we've knotted, so the groups of warp threads from each tablet and try to get them as even as we can to one length. Set those knots around about in the same place. Now I'm just gonna place my fingers just in the center there. Can you see here? So that's giving me, showing me the shed between the top and the bottom. We just divide that. Don't worry if it's not quite right, it'll even out as we go through this process. I'm sliding the waist thread into that gap and then I'm going to tie the waist thread to hold all of those threads securely. Okay. Now I'm going to pick up the tablets and I'm going to slightly move this so that it's facing me because I, and that the roller is away from me because I just find that this is an easier way to do it than to try to go side to side. Now I'm going to pull down and even out these threads. So we're worrying about the threads first. We'll go back and forth a little bit. Okay, so that's starting to straighten out the threads. Now the secret here is that you have to hold the thread, the tablets fairly sort of, you don't want them shoved together. Put your finger in between that space. Just make sure that they're all top and bottom of the stick because that does help, yep. Yeah. And then we're going to take the roller, so I'm going to move this over and I'm going to roll to the back so that the threads go over the top of the roller, all right? And as you, I'm holding this quite firmly, but still with the gap so the threads can move. And I've kept the sticks so that they stay in order. And you can see that the threads are moving. 
through the tablet and straightening out on the beam. Now they're not very tight at the moment, that's all right. When we get to the point where we think that the threads, you see they're starting to get a little bit messed up, so we want to straighten those out. So we'll put the roller lock in, okay, and that will stop that from moving. And then we can I'll move the loom up. You can then comb through with your fingers just to straighten out some of those lengths. You'll need to do this a few times in the, you know, obviously depending on um, the length of your uh, warp. If you can, just every once in a while, just pull it so it goes nice and tight again. So we'll remove the roller lock. So you see, I'm just lifting that off. And then I'm going to roll again. Again, trying to keep the tension and keep everything as even to the center of the loom as possible. And then I'm coming up with a bit that needs a little bit of uh, combing out. So back to the roller lock. Comb out the threads at the back. I'll just move this right over so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just basically running my fingers through because they've all been individually threaded up, they should, um, if you're gentle with them, they should just come out. They just are catching on each other, basically. So then we come back, hold again, again with my finger in that space, because that helps to keep the tension. And then again, roll, holding on to the tablets as I do so, pulling the threads through. Okay, time for the roller lock again. And we're getting close to the end of the thread, so you've got to be very careful because it the chances are what will happen at this point is you'll see that some threads are longer than, uh, than the others, even though you have um, cut them all at the same length initially. So don't worry about that. So I'm just going to roll it a little bit further. But as I say, watching because you don't want to unthread your tablet, so you don't want to go too far. That will about do it. Pop the roller lock in. And now we're going to start with the serious warping. Okay, because basically that step was simply to untangle and make sure that everything is lining up. So now at this end, we're gonna hold that quite taut. As taut as we can and then tie that into an overhand knot. Trim off those excess threads if they bother you. They'll certainly help uh, warping if they're not there. So we're gonna rest the tablets just on the side of the box there. We're gonna take another length of waist thread now and do exactly the same. We're going to fold the waist thread in half, lay this over the top of the loom, take the ends through, so we've got a, a waist length there. And take the um, roller stop off of this side, and then 
going to get the tablet and tie quite tightly the group of warp threads to this waist length. Now, what we need to do now is remove the roller locks from both sides and then we need to roll all of this onto this, um, onto the warp beam as evenly and as keeping the tension as taut as possible, okay? So again, you're going to need to hold on to your tablets. It's a good idea to hold on to them through so that you've, you've got, you're keeping the top and bottom warps. We roll away and over the loom, uh, over the roller. We're just gonna get this started. And because that knot is there, I'm just gonna move that off to the side. I'm gonna use the stop on this side, the long stop on this side. And then I'm going to turn the loom so that I can get the tension exactly the same as I did before. I can hold on to it, but I can really pull this time and get the tension going. So we're going to go over and you see I'm holding on and I'm also holding on to the threads here so that I can really get some nice taut threads as I'm winding. Now if you come up to your knot you don't want to actually lay any threads on top of your knot. So the best thing to do there is at your knot place one of the warp sticks on there. And that will just, I'll just show you, cover that up so that you keep your warp threads nice and straight, all right? And so we keep that covering that, that's it. And of course it's going to be easier this way because more or less the combs, the threads have been combed through already. And so there'll be less tangling. Now, then you'll start to get right to the end. Let's put our lock in. And you'll see that all those little knots that you did before are now rather messy. So you're going to need to now comb these through. And obviously the lock is on the opposite side. Cut the waist thread and remove that and then cut these threads at the knot, whatever knot it is that you're there, just at that point. So you've got them nice and even now. Everything is now nice and taut and even. And it really will make a huge difference to your weaving if you can get everything nice and straight at this point, okay? I'm going to move those tablets along 
tie this end into a nice even overhand knot. Make sure all of those threads are there. Looks like I've missed one. Let's just retie that to make sure. And then that is now nice and taut. So we now put the third waist length in exactly the same way over the top, take it through. We're gonna put a lock, a roller lock on there just whilst I do this. And then I'm gonna, because what I want to do is I want this to be nice, pulled up nice and taut. when I'm tying the knot as much as I possibly can. We have the warp spacers, so that can always be used to help tighten up anything that needs tightening. Okay, so here we have it, a loosely warped up loom. Now we just need to tighten this side up by winding the roll around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the lock on the other side so that I can bring the warp along you, what you can't see is that I'm actually holding both of the rollers moving them both at the same time because that's just that little bit easier so I want this one about here because we want that knot out of our way so we can start weaving actually that's probably a little bit too close let's just take it to about there so you can start weaving a little bit more easily pop in the roller lock tighten the back so it's nice and taut And a roller lock. And that is your loom warped and ready to go. Now the thing is, is to make sure that all of your tablets are still in order the way that you want them. So we'll remove the stick first and see everything should sit up. And that's when you go back to the pattern and just make sure the first thing is, is to make sure that for um, the sake of the pattern, what you need to do is you need to set it up so that A is over here. So on every tablet, A has to be in this corner. So we will turn the tablets to get A to the starting position. Now you see, I have a tablet that's gotten tangled up at the back. So I'm going to undo that and say, oh, now where is that tangle at? The tangle's just there because there's a little bit of a loose thread. So we're going to turn it again so we don't have, see if we can get that where that's gone. And the reason that that tangle is there is because I have warped this up incorrectly. So there is a perfect lesson for you. You will never be able to tablet weave if you do this. From behind, from behind, from behind, from the front. You will never be able to do a tablet weaving if you have that problem, okay? So then what you need to do is you need to cut that offending thread that's been 
um, threaded incorrectly, which happens to be this one right here. You need to thread it then correctly, which is from the back. To the front and then at this point the easiest thing to do is probably because this is all tied up into a nice knot is to take um, another length of thread I'll show you in a different length tie this together so we've got a good strong knot here And then this can be tied around our guide string here and keep the tension. Okay. I'm tying on with a few half hitches. And that should hold it because once we start weaving that will all be all right trim this out of the way so it doesn't annoy us okay so we go back to checking yep that's now in the right order no tangle at the back which is exactly what we want and then again so we then have to look at it from the front from the top i mean so we want to make sure that all of that threading is correct and you can see that they're all slanting on this side. Let's just do it like that. Get it in shot for you. So we've got the four slanting this way and the four slanting that way. So then we're ready to start weaving. So this is the cloth beam. Now what that means is, is this is where the woven cloth but in our case obviously a ribbon is going to be wound onto the far beam is the warp beam because this is where all of the spare warp is currently held so for my instructions weaving uh, turning the tablets forward is towards the warp and backward is towards the cloth Okay, now in with the kit, you've got a little arrow. So this can help you to keep your place in a pattern. Okay, so I'm just putting some thread onto my shuttle. So that I can start off with the weaving and show you how to begin. Now there's all sorts of different ways to start out um, when you're weaving and really just start weaving. Don't worry about fancy uh, starts and ends when you're first beginning because there are that many different ways of doing it and really you just want to get started actually weaving. One thing that you can do though so that you have a nice straight edge is you can Slip one of your warp spacers in if you like. That'll just straighten things out for you. But this is not necessary. And um, really, just start with putting some thread through. So for this pattern, we're going four forward. So to turn the tablets forward, I'm going to show you from the side. You turn the tablets like so. So you're turning them two going in that direction to the front of the loom. So now, if you'll notice, the lettering has changed. A has moved from here to here, and so all of the threads have changed. This changes the shed, which is this division here. Put the shuttle in and push down. That's called beating the shed come through, leave a little loop. So that's one. Then we go forward again. That's two. So we come down, beat the shed. 
You're not going to see much of a pattern initially. Pull in the loop, bring the weft through, leaving a little loop. That's two. Turn the tablets again, forward, because that's what this pattern requires. Beat the shed, pull through the loop, come through. We're going to get a little knot come up here because um, the threads have obviously moved when I've tied my knot. Don't worry about it, we're just going to get started. So that's three, so now we need four. We've done the same. Now, because the tablet has four sides, four forward will bring us back to the starting position. Likewise, four back will bring us back to the starting position. So it's really helpful then for you to know what you're doing with a four four pattern. So we'll just move the arrow just in case, because we could forget which side we're on and weave. So I'm just gonna weave for a little while, get this established so that you can actually see what it is that I'm doing. And I'll try to move the tablets into shot so that you can also see. So now I'm gonna go back. So back is turning them towards me, all right? Which means that with the tablets, A moves down, as opposed to across, it moves down. So D comes into the A, the starting A space. And so you can see that the pattern is now starting to develop. And it's basically, that is what you do. Four forward, four back, for the length of the band. Now there's a couple of things that I want to show you. because I don't want you to worry about them. And that is when we change direction. So I'm about to change direction now. I'm gonna go forward again, so I'll move that. I'm gonna go forward. And you can see that basically what's happening is, is there's a longer stitch, okay? compared to the next. And that is the color is basically um, in the space twice. So when you're pattern working. Now sometimes, depending on what color is uppermost, that will become obvious. So we're gonna go back now, and you can see that you can see the weft thread there. That's perfectly normal. These are called reversal points. Um, 
there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. They are what make up the pattern itself. So, you know, don't be um, alarmed if you have them on a pattern. That's, that's what you will have. It doesn't matter. And the reason that I'm leaving the loop as I weave just helps to um, keep your edges a little bit tidier and keep everything the same length. The other thing that you'll see at the reversals is those long stitches also happen at the edges. So you see there's a little bit of a wavy um, appearance at the edges and you see more of the weft. That is also perfectly normal. Don't worry about it. Um, a lot of people get very stressed about them, but that is part of the design. You can eliminate them a little bit by having a very, very tight um, warp and by actually really, really pushing in and beating the shed very, very tightly can often um, get rid of these. Well, not get rid of them, but you know, make them a little less noticeable. Oh, no, one more to do, one more to do. <laughs> Didn't count properly then. But you see, that's why, always look at the tablets, because every time that you look at the tablets and you understand what the pattern is that's actually happening, then you will understand. Um, how to find your place if you've lost it. And that is how you tablet weave. I hope this has helped. Uh, please subscribe and I will um, try to do some more videos um, about certain tablet weaving techniques. If you want, there's anything particular that you um, are interested in, do leave me a comment and um, like the video and I'll keep making some more. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.